Hey, I'm John, and today I'm going to show you a relatively simple technique that I use to create this endless tunnel uh, for this uh, arcade-style shooter that I'm prototyping. And uh, gained a couple strategic advantages by creating this tunnel uh, procedurally. Uh, of course, I didn't have to create a level manually where I would attach these tunnel sections end to end myself to create a long enough uh, play experience. Uh, but also by creating the tunnel randomly, it makes it so every playthrough is a new experience. Uh, the player can't memorize or anticipate any of these uh, corners or turns. You have to negotiate each one uh, as they come up and as you see them. Uh, so I'll show you quickly here how to make a simple uh, tunnel section, a single tunnel section in Blender uh, in just a couple of minutes, and then how to uh, create an actor in Unreal Engine that you can use to procedurally spawn an endless tunnel. All right, so I'm going to start off in Blender and quickly make a 90 degree section of this tube here. And what I'll do is go add, curve, and I'm going to add a NURBS circle. I'll go to modeling mode and just press 7 on my numpad to look at it from above. And I want to grab these vertices along the top and holding shift I'm going to grab these two as well. So I've got everything selected except for these three. I'm going to right click and say delete segment. And so now I've got just this perfect 90 degree segment of the circle. And so I'll go back to layout mode here and I'm just going to go to the object data tab, geometry, and I'm going to set a depth here. I'm going to click on depth and type in maybe 0.25. And uh, I'll also increase the resolution here. It's a little bit choppy around the edges. We'll say maybe from 4, I'll increase that to maybe 16. I'll probably make this a nanite mesh anyway. Um, and so what I'll do next here is go object, convert, mesh. And back to modeling mode. Now we can see we've got our nice mesh here for this 90 degree section of tube. Uh, but there's one problem. If I show the face orientation here, we can see the outside as the proper normals, but the inside is all just the backside of those outer faces. Uh, and so what I want to do is I actually want to be able to go inside of this tunnel and have a proper face on the inside. And so what I want to do is go to face select mode here, uh, A to select all, right click, extrude faces along normals, and uh, I'll just type in a value here, 0 0.01. All right, and no, now I've got proper faces inside and outside. We don't see any backsides of faces or anything red here. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn that back off here, face orientation. And what I want to do next is just adjust this uh, position uh, relative to the center of the scene here. I'm just going to press G, Y, 1. And uh, that also has moved my origin point over as well here. So I'm just going to go to Object, Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Uh, so you want your origin point here to be basically smack in the middle of one of these uh, circular openings for the uh, tube. Uh, and one more thing I'm going to do here, um, uh, I just need to flip this around uh, 180 degrees here on the Z. I'm going to go R, Z, 180. And so now, Basically, uh, and if you're having trouble with this, uh, if it's not working for you, you need to check your setup here, check the UI in, in Blender and make sure that X plus X is outwards this way, uh, minus X is behind you this way, and then plus Y here is off to your left, and minus Y is off to the right, and of course uh, plus Z is up and minus Z is down. And if you have that set up like this, if your UI looks like this and your pipe looks like this, and your origin point is here, uh, then this is going to work out for you. So that's the proper setup. And so I'm going to go ahead and export this as uh, endlesstube.fbx. All right, and so next I've got Unreal Engine open here, and I'm going to import that endlesstube.fbx file. Uh, and I'll just uh, not create a material here or anything. And what I'll do is I want to make an actor here. So I'll right click, blueprint, actor, B underscore uh, endless tube section. All right, and so what I'll do is add a static mesh, and I'll set that static mesh here to uh, the endless tube model that I just imported. And now I want to add, what I'll do actually is drag static mesh over the default scene root and replace it, and add a sphere collision. And I'll call this attach point. And uh, I can change the uh, size here. It doesn't have to be uh, quite this large. It's just a dummy point anyway that we're going to use uh, to position the next section of tube. So I'll set the size here to maybe 10. 
And uh, I want to set the position here to the end of the tube. So right now it's at 0, 0, 0. That's the origin point. We'll set this location here to uh, 100 by 100. Uh, and that's 100 on the X and 100 on the Y. And so now that's at exactly the exit point of the tube. And that's where we need to attach the next section. Uh, OK, and so we also need this to face forward. And when I say face forward, I mean the red arrow needs to face outwards. The X axis needs to face outwards from the tube. So I just need to turn this on the uh, Z axis here by 90 degrees. All right, and now our red axis, our X axis is facing outwards. Uh, so that's basically the setup for that. I'm going to go to the event graph now. And what I want to do here is when we, I'll just create one section of tube and then have each section go ahead and procedurally create the next section automatically. So on begin play, we'll say set timer by event. And we'll wait uh, maybe just one second. Uh, you can set this up obviously any way that you want. However, you would want to generate your uh, procedural uh, tunnel or tube. Uh, I'm just going to say every one second and make a new custom event here. And we'll call this spawn next section. And we don't need to say looping because uh, it's already going to loop automatically. We are going to spawn another actor here. Spawn actor from class and spawn the B underscore endless tube section. So when we spawn another one, uh, the begin play for that one is going to fire causing a new timer, causing a new section. So we don't need to set looping here on this uh, timer. And so for the spawn transform here, I'll right click, split the struct pin, grab this attach point, drag it in, and we'll say get world location. And I'll plug that in here for location and drag off here again and get world rotation. And we'll plug that in for the rotation. OK, and so that'll generate one tube after the other. But uh, so far, it's just going to create a bunch of tubes in a circle. Each, each uh, tube turns 90 degrees, and you'll just make one big circle so far. What I want to do is rotate each uh, new section relative to the last one so that it goes off in a new random direction. Um, so what I'll do here is off the return value from the spawn actor, I'm going to say add actor local rotation. And uh, I'll split this pin. And I just want to rotate it a little bit on the x axis. And when I say a little bit, I mean by some random amount. Uh, so what I'll do here is just say uh, get random, uh, not get, but rather random integer in range. And we'll say uh, get an integer between 1 and 8. And uh, we'll multiply this by 45 degrees. So uh, we'll rotate by as little as, uh, well, it doesn't make sense to rotate 8 times 45 is 360. So we'll say 7, 1 to 7. As little as 45 degrees uh, and as much as 315 degrees. And so uh, we'll just plug this into the x value here. It'll automatically convert that to a float for me. And that's pretty much it. So let's check it out here. I'll compile close and uh, we'll just drag one of these into the scene here. I'll just place this maybe here and put it up here and uh, I'll press play and we'll see what happens. All right and uh, so that's pretty much it and so this is uh, randomly generating new sections at the attach point, the end point of the uh, previous section and uh, of course there's one thing to note here is that we don't have any uh, regard for collision. So uh, if by random chance this tube happened to double back on itself, uh, there's nothing stopping it from crossing through itself. And so you, know, you might need to implement some sort of um, way to detect uh, that you know, there's a collision and to ra randomly rotate in another different direction or something like that. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.